Hello everyone, and welcome back to Loom. When we left off, uh, I was a bit stuck, and then when I was editing, I realised what I'm supposed to do. I have to come here, refill the pool, as I have done, and now we're going to learn the reflect draft. F. J. A. A. F. Right. Okay. So now we know where I have to go, or at least now I know what I have to do. Um, so yes, I apologise that this uh, episode was a day late, um, because my Wildcard Wednesday video was also a day late. As I said in that, uh, we've had builders in, and I've been having to clear and put everything back in the room that they've been working in. By the time that I had um, finished, I still haven't finished, if I'm perfectly honest, I've still got lots of stuff to move. Um, in the evening, it was just gone past the time that I could I could record. Also, the fact as well that it, as it was bonfire night last night, there were many, many fireworks going off. I did try to record, but um, it was just impossible. Uh, it was just not going to work. So, uh, that is why you're seeing this today. But, we're still going to get on to this today. So, reflect draft. So, F, A, A, F. Hey, there we go. Still napping. Okay, so now we should be able to get in. Hello, hail, young nailbender. Hail. Stoke is looking for you. He sure looks mad. You'd better get in there quickly. Let me open the gate for you. Looks kind of comfortable. Yawn. The straw must have a sleep draft spot on it. Can't do much without my distaff anyway. <laughs> Dragon still flying around with the burnt tail. Oh, I think I just remember what happens now. This is kind of... Tsk, tsk, tsk. Imagine frightened little defenseless like Imagine frightening well, I may not be much good with fire, sweetie. But young for me is something I can really seek my teeth into. Huh? My robe's not reflecting anymore. Something must have happened to Rusty. Hope he's okay. Look at this. One stick of wood left. One. Furnace won't keep much longer. No! Tens, thousands of swords to fours and furnace has gone cold. Because my new office furniture. <laughs> hmm. 
Uh oh. Poor little Rusty. That Weaver kid did this to me. Now I have to wait outside. If I ever get my hands on him. Back to the pattern. That was easy. Pity that someone had to die for me to return. Dragon. Poor child. Now, where can Bobbin have gone? Couldn't be there. <laughs> Those smiths are a suspicious lot. They'd never let a weaver inside. <laughs> well, that's... So, Uh-oh. <laughs> Perhaps I ought to look into this. I just realised that I actually can't remember what her voice that I made used to be like. Things I go through. What would Elder Atropos say if he saw his distaff treated so? Got it. Mustn't singe the feathers. <laughs> and we have the staff. Now I'm back in business. Open the door. Empty wood bin. What happened to Hetchel? A lot of swords. Hard to be nosy with all this noise. Good thing they have to shout to hear themselves. The final blade is being sharpened even as we speak, Your Excellency. My most skillful blade sharper is seeing to it personally. This is a historic moment for me, Nailbender. The forging of the 10,000th sword marks the end of our preparations. How goes the sharpening, Edgewise? The metal does... So what is the... Oh, I've got to dull the sword. Oh, um, so F... Damn it! I suppose I ought to point at something first. I've got to wait until he's done it. So F. Damn it. Quick. F. A. F. D. Foreman, what evil is this? A witch's curse has befallen the blade. The edge has been mischievously blunted. A curse, Edgewise? I think not. I hate to believe a witch's curse would... So thoroughly ruined my schedule. You don't suppose that fellow who's been spying on us has anything to do with it? Perhaps he'd care to accompany me back to my cathedral. I may have new curses to teach him. Damn! Bishop Mandibles was a model of the anticyclical conclave of clerics. Am I supposed to kneel or something? Silence, prisoner! My assistant, Cobb, charming. Your cloak and staff betray your origin. I studied the law of your guild at the university. It's been a long time since any weeper dared to set foot off that dreary rock you call home. You look so proudly. I can't help but wonder what impelled you to leave it now. <clears throat> the Excellency asked you a question. I know. Ignoring it. Ah, recalculate. I see. Shall I fetch the image of persuasion? There's a lot of long words from this guy. <laughs> Forget the whole city of him. He doesn't realize how dangerous a weaver could be. Dangerous? Him? 
Do you think this iron cage of yours is enough to hold the boy captive? Why, well, you could burst it wide open with hardly a second thought. Excellently, I inspect the locks every Tuesday. Observe and learn, my servant. Even now, your prisoner plans his escape. So I basically just got to open the cage. <laughs> Ta-da! You see, Cobb? An elusive breed, these weavers. Luckily, they're quite helpless without their weaving sticks. Give me that! You dare raise your voice to His Excellency. Now, now, Cobb, we must be rude to our guest. Not after he was kind enough to bring us such a magnificent gift. Mandible, that dead staff will never work for you. You're wrong, my arrogant young friend. Come, let me show you why. You heard his exalted one. Move it. It's a lot of graves. In the graveyard, the boundary between the living and the dead is indistinct. The weavers would say that the pattern here is fragile, thin in scores. Every graveyard is like that. I suspect it as much. Now imagine what might happen if this delicate boundary were to be somehow breached. Torn open, so to speak. Forget it, Mandible. You can't rip the pattern apart like an old rag. But I can, I can! All our requires we was this staff's four threads of the opening draft. Thank you for supplying both so readily. When the boundary is breached, the dead will stream back into the plane of the living, so eager to reclaim their place among us. I'll be waiting for them ready to offer my vast expertise in spiritual leadership. Shall preside over the teeming world of restless shades, immortal, invincible, an army of the dead, with myself as its supreme commander. An army nourished by the meat of the shepherds, armed with the swords of the blacksmiths, and guided by the sphere of the glassmakers. As I was praying to invoke the dead, more forceful means. And the glassmakers delivered my spirit, foretold of your convenient arrival. And that shows me the smiths are repairing the story, right, Jerome. The age of the clerks will soon be upon us. Cobb, don't let him out of your sight. I won't, Excellency. And don't let him touch anything. Well, this is only going to go badly. Lord Mandible, ruler of the universe. Time to change my station. <laughs> Not so dangerous now, are you? <laughs> so what can we learn from the orb? <sighs> Keep away from that, you... His Excellency said not to touch anything. I wasn't going to touch it, just looking, that's all. Just looking, eh? Hmm. Tell you what. I'll let you look at it if you let me look at something. <clears throat> what did you have in mind? Legends say it is death to gaze upon a weaver uncloaked. Naturally, we clerics pay little heed to such foolish rumours. Still, I'm curious. I'll let you look into this sphere if you let me lift your hood. Deal? I wouldn't try that if I were you. Why not? There's nothing to fear under that fine robe of yours, is there? If you fear nothing, then you'd better not touch me. Ah, a riddle. I like riddles. Let's answer this little riddle once and for all, shall we? Fools! How am I supposed to invoke the dead with all that screaming in there? <laughs> Layman. <laughs> Can't say I didn't warn him. It does make me want to know what is hap what is going on under his cloak, but I don't want to die. Smile again! A roast chicken. Okay. For the <gasps> no, is Hetchel gonna get turned into a roast chicken? Gonna eat Hetchel, that'll be weird. Okay, that's not really telling us anything. Alrighty then. I see Cobb is being lax in his duties. No matter, you're just in time to witness the dawn of a new era. You don't know what you're doing, Mandible. The pattern is worn enough already. If you rip a hole in it now, spare me your weaver mysticism. No more shall the dead envy the living. Wow. He 
I must have opened everything within 50 miles of here, including the eyes of the dead. Behold. I have a very bad feeling about this. Who dares disturb the peace of those who sleep? Greetings, noble spirit. I, Bishop Mandible, transmit to the conclave of clerics. Who have I the honor of summoning? I am chaos. Join me. <laughs> bye bye, Bish. I see it has been too long since my last visit. Well, that went well. Can't seem to hold on to this thing. So now, now what? Where's the thing that was in the cage? That's... Oh, that can't be good. What's this going to tell us now? It's going to give us the chicken again. It's not going to give us anything new. And there's nothing else. There must be something outside then. Oh, hello. <laughs> Yipes. Oh, there we go. Into the infinite black. Oh, yeah, so now we can travel. Now I remember this now. I, I, I was literally like, what is, I know something's happening. There's a bit where you fly through space. So that's this bit. Here we are. Better not wander too far. Well, well, well. Look who's here. Rusty? My old pal, Bobbin Threadbear. Rusty, this is awful. How did it happen? Well, Bobbin, old buddy, I think it's something like this. I'm lying here minding my own business when the strange new kid shows up and decides me he wants to switch clothes with me. I figure, hey, so what? Have a little fun, right? We can always switch back again later. So this kid walks away, looking just like me. Fine, only one problem. The kid forgets to mention that a 40-foot dragon is out to get him. And what happens when the same dragon sees me lying there, looking just like you? I don't know what to say. I always end up like this, dead. So I go outside and wait for doomsday like a good little ghost. And what do you suppose then happens? Oh, hello. Gulp. <laughs> Some idiot rips the universe apart and hauls us all back inside. A lot of dead ones are really upset. That's understandable. In fact, some of them have decided to take over the world. Starting with my hometown. Torn to pieces. Ugh. Um, I don't think there's... Oh, no, you don't. You and your stick got me into this mess. You're not going anywhere until you help me out. But I would be very surprised if this works. <laughs> it does work. <laughs> okay, then. You did it. You brought me back. That's what you want, isn't it? You can bring people back. From the dead? You were hurt. I healed you. That's all. I guess I, He wasn't hurt. He was dead. He was... He'd been torn in half. He'd been eaten. Half of him had been eaten. Sorry, I have to do the same thing. Save in guild. Good luck, though, and be careful. Good luck to you, too, my friend. So this is taking us probably to all the yeah all the graveyards. Never had a chance. You're too late, wizard. Dead increase their numbers here. My songs useless. Still suffering. At least we can end their misery. Extend your powers if you can. We're alive, and the sheep is still green. <laughs> Fleece, what happened? We were overrun. 
You are saved by the mercy of yonder boy, whose power has grown since we last met. Shepherds of long memories, wizard, I shall not forget your kindness. Come, before the dead ones return, to reap us again. Okay, right. Shit's going down, and it's going to have to go down, continue to go down, in the next episode. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, favourite, subscribe, share, it really helps me out a lot. And I shall see you all with another video very soon.